Welcome to the Trauma-Informed School Practices Module 9, Disciplinary Practices. This module will discuss how schools can modify disciplinary practices so they become trauma-informed. It will also suggest ways to reduce the need for discipline. This quote captures trauma-informed thinking about misbehavior. When a child in your classroom is not doing well, remember this quote by Ross Green. Children do well if they possess the skills needed and if unsolved problems are addressed. When a child misbehaves, it's up to the adults to figure out why and address the roots of the behavior. Punishments and punitive disciplinary practices do not take into account lagging skills and unsolved problems, such as the people, places, and situations that often precipitate behaviors. And they frequently do not accomplish the desired changes in behavior. Punishments assume the student can do well and is choosing not to. Punishment-based discipline practices in response to pain-based behavior do not heal, restore, or deter future misbehavior. They may re-traumatize, shame, and isolate, and they may increase maladaptive patterns of behavior. Zero-tolerance discipline policies exclude or expel youngsters with emotional and behavioral problems without addressing the problems underlying the behaviors. Trauma-informed practices would tell us we need to understand and address the underlying problems if we want to change behavior. Punishing problem behavior without a positive school-wide system of support, including trauma-informed practices, is associated with increases in problem behaviors rather than decreases. Strong universal practices and intervening before there is an actual need for discipline are the most powerful tools in the trauma-informed discipline toolbox. For guidance in developing supports for behavior, look to the universal practices incorporated in positive behavior support. What is your school doing to teach, practice, and acknowledge the expected behaviors so that students learn what is expected in each environment? Do you have school-wide or classroom celebrations so that improvement and appropriate behaviors are encouraged and acknowledged? Have you developed your school expectations and a matrix of expected behaviors? To prevent problems, provide for consistent, predictable, and clearly stated behavioral expectations across all school environments for all students. Provide classroom-based instruction in social-emotional learning and small group boosters for students who need more support. In Madison schools, the second step curriculum is used. Don't assume all students have the expected behaviors in their repertoire. A sequenced program that explicitly teaches expected social-emotional skills and allows the students to actively practice the skills will not only improve behavior, but also academic achievement. Trauma-informed universal practices include being alert to signs that a child is becoming upset or agitated and having strategies for averting a full behavioral incident. An FBA and BIP can help in this process. Even better, before an incident happens, anticipate possible triggers for individual children and have strategies for heading off agitation and upset reactions. Operate on the assumption that misbehavior has a purpose or is expressing a need. Feeling safe, gaining personal regulation, getting sensory input, empowerment, and having control are some needs that drive behavior. Often, using behavior pathway along with a behavior intervention plan can identify factors that are motivating the misbehaviors and guide us in reducing and or change the behaviors. Please spend some time with these handouts from the facilitator's guide. 
Restorative approaches use the incident of misbehavior as an educative opportunity for repairing the harm by fostering more socially responsible relationships and encouraging behaviors that take others' perspectives into account. This is achieved through carefully structured opportunities for individuals to understand the impact of their actions, recognize their social responsibilities, and make amends to those who have been affected. The young person is also assisted to reintegrate successfully into the school community. You will find links and handouts on restorative practices in the facilitator's guide. When misbehavior occurs, provide restorative opportunities. Restorative circles help individuals to understand how their actions impacted others and to develop increased empathy, as well as feeling renewed belonging to their community. Think about some current practices that do and do not fit within the concept of trauma-informed disciplinary practices. How is it that these practices help or hurt the student? Plan to talk about this after the PowerPoint is over. Best practices include having proactive procedures and plans rather than reactive systems with punitive consequences. We have discussed universal practices that staff can put in place for all students. To meet individual student needs, best practices include analyzing the functions of misbehavior to develop proactive behavioral support and intervention plans. This includes using data-driven systems to monitor the effectiveness of the plans, and it involves using a multi-tiered intervention model. We know some discipline practices and safety measures, like seclusion and restraint, may trigger a trauma response. While schools must provide for the emotional and physical safety of all students, be aware of and respectful of the potential for re-traumatization of students who may have trauma histories. Have pre-planned strategies for removing a child or others from the location for the safety of all, and to assist the child to save face and to calm without an audience. Have a plan for successfully reintegrating the child back into the classroom community and for providing the child with the opportunity to make restoration when harm has occurred. Also have strategies for de-escalating and calming a child who is dysregulated past the rational thought level. Practice the routine used for seclusion or restraint ahead of time when the student is calm. Explain that the use is for safety, not punishment. Explain the seclusion or restraint will end when the student is calm and safe. Please see the handouts for more specifics. Discipline practices that respond to student needs not just react to student misbehavior, and assist the child in taking responsibility for the outcomes of their behavior are best suited for teaching all students new patterns of behaviors. During the next month, take some time to plan ahead with your team.